Hi, this is chapter 5, Discounted Cash Flow Valuation. This is the chapter uh, that, sh uh, sh uh, that shows the present value, future value, relative time value money for the multiple cash flow. Now, chapter 4, we only use the one-time cash flow, which is also called the lump sum cash flows. Now, for chapter 5, we are going to be more realistic. Um, we're going to handle the multiple number of cash flows. So, let's do that. So this is the example. If you deposit hundred dollars year one, two hundred dollars year two, three hundred dollars year three. Now, if interest rate is seven percent, how much will you have in three years? So let's focus on first question first. So now let if we draw the timeline. Year zero today, year one, year two, year three. Okay, this is one. So deposit hundred dollars. Let's just um, ignore the the direction of cash flow at this time, because we're gonna use uh, the the mathematics right now. Two hundred dollars year two, three hundred dollars year three. Okay. Now, how much will we have year three? It means that. Calculate the future value of these cash flows, and when you calculate the ca um, future value or present value of the multiple cash flows, the thing is you basically have to separately think this cash flow as like a it lump sum cash flow. So hundred dollars here one, just separately think about that, and two hundred dollars here two separately, and three hundred dollars here three. It means that. So in this case, it's the same as having three different accounts. One is $100 deposit year one and withdraw in year three. Number two, $200 year two and withdraw one year later. And year three, three and, I mean account three is the $300 in year three. So what about future value in year three for the first account is now you have $100 deposit. You have two year interest seven percent. So you have two years to get interest, right? First year, second year. So the square it will be one hundred fourteen dollars and forty nine cents. Okay. How about how about second one? Future value year two equals two. Now we have two hundred dollars. 1 plus 7 percent. Now how many years do we have? We have one year to get into us, right? So it's 1, which is 214 dollars. Now the third one, because it's just 300 since we don't have time to get interest, right? So the total future value is now just sum of these three values, because some of these accounts is your total wealth. It's going to be $114.49 plus $214 plus $300. It will be $628.49. So you're going to have $628.49 in year three. Okay. All right, so step is pretty simple. You separately think this cash flow, and you just treat this cash flow separate, lump sum cash flow. Get a future value in each and add them up. That's how to compute the the future value of multiple cash flow. Now let's see the next question. How much will it have in year five if you donate additional amount? So. We have $628.49. Now we have two more years, year four and five, right? No more money added. So this is kind of the same as the lump, having lump sum cash flow, $628.49. That's the money we have here. And we have two more years to get into rest. So the future value will be $628.49 times one plus 7% again and square which is 
and 56 cents okay so that's how to compute the feature value for a multiple calculator again now let's use calculator so uh, we cannot use the uh, the TBM function as we did in this previous one so this is the TBM function right we cannot use this one because this is only for the lump sum cash flow or so some special case of the multiple cash flow uh, that we're going to learn actually after this section instead we're going to use this CF button which is also called the cash flow register it means that you register cash flow okay and get the present value feature value to get a to use the cash flow register first press cf then you must have cf0 something equal to zero i believe this is the initial cash flow and we don't have any initial cash flow so we just leave it at zero because it don't know cash flow and then you press this down arrow Okay. Then you have C01. C01 is the first year cash flow. Now the first year cash flow can be c c computed by, I mean, I mean, not it's computed, it's a given, right? It's $100. So you must put $100 here. It's 100. Now 100. So press 100. And press enter. Then you have CF. C01 equal to 100. Okay. And then down again. Now you have. Okay, down, okay. You have F01. F01 is the frequency of this cash flow. Frequency means if you have the same cash flow subsequently, and then you can use this F. The thing is, we are going to have different amount of cash flow in year two so one hundred dollars just one time right so just leave as one and down you have c02 now c02 is 200 I'll enter and you have c02 equal to 200 down and F02 again equal to 1 then leave it down now C03 swap is 300 right so C03 and 300 enter then where is the enter button enter button is here right equal to C03 equal to 300 down confirm if F03 equal to 1. Now that's the end of the registering cash flow. If you use this one, uh, if you register like that, the same as registering like this here, right? This one, same. So, what we want to do is now, we want to do compute future value. The, unfortunately, we cannot compute the direct future value from this calculation. Because there's no function to get the future value for this cash flow. So what we have to do is we actually have to compute the present value first and then convert to the, to the future value. How to get it? So now press NPB. This is MPB, and you must have I equal to zero. It means that you need to put the interest. Interest is seven percent. So seven, enter. You have I equal to seven. Now, interest is seven percent. Now press down arrow. Still, you have MPB equal to zero because you did not compute. So let's compute the cpt then you're gonna have mpb equals to now you must have 512 dollars and 84 cents 
So actually, that's the present value. Now, how to convert present value to future value? Now, assume that you actually have this present value. If this is the present value, n equal to 3, i equal to 7%, or you can use the, the formula fv equal to pv times 1 plus r part to the p. Then you can get the same amount. 628 dollars and 49 cents that's how to get the, the future value for the multiple cash flows using the cash flow register yeah. okay. how to get the present value however now for present value is basically all the same I mean, you can use the cash flow register as I did before, but basically you have three years, now $100, $200, $300, right? Then, actually, you can separately compute the present value in each, add them up, that will be your PV, okay? So it's going to be 5 to 12, dollars and 84 cents as we did in calculator so I leave it as your practice okay if you have trouble in uh, practicing it then uh, let me know in class now let's talk about little special things now for the multiple cash flows we have a number of different uh, types of multiple cash flow but there's a special cash flow called annuity so there are three characteristics that annuity should have. Number one, your payment should be identical. It means that you have like the the previous one is not annuity because we don't have identical payments. Hundred dollars for thirty years, two hundred dollars for two years, things like that. Number two, all periods are evenly spaced. It means that it should be annual, quarterly, monthly, daily. You know, it should be evenly spaced. The th number three is the same interest rate between each period, so 7% interest never changes. Like the, if interest rate changes after one year, that's not annuity. And there are three different types of annuity in terms of the uh, uh, p timing of the payment and the, the, the existence of maturity. The first one called the perpetuity. Perpetuity means that pay payment occurs at the end of the period but payment occurs forever, which means that there's no maturity. So $2 payment forever. That's the perpetuity. If your payment has maturity, so it's like 30 year payment, 20 year payment, five year payment, 10 month payment, you know, then there are two different type of annuity in terms of the, the timing of payment. So if the payment takes place at the end of the period, we call it is OA, ordinary annuity. If the payment takes place at the, at the beginning of the period, we call it annuity due. So this is AD. So that's the definition. Now let's look at the perpetuity first. So this is the perpetuity formula. Perpetuity is basically is unlimited problem, in, infinite problem, right? So if it pays $100 today and pay forever, I mean not today actually, one year later and pay forever and it's basically the number of cash flow is unlimited. So we cannot really compute using the cash flow register or any types of the calculator. You have to use the mathematics or some calculus technique and derive the formula here. So this is the perpetuity formula which is pretty simple. Present value equals to your payment, PMT is the payment, divide by interest rate. If you remember this formula, then you can easily solve the problem. So let's look at this example. The preferred share pays $1 dividend quarterly. So usually the preferred share pay quarterly dividend. $1 dividend. The current price is $40, what is the qu quarterly rate return for the, the share? So we want to get this R. We have present value, which is the current price, like fair price present value, right? $40. So 40 equals to 
now we want to we have we know the PMT one divided by R right so R equals to what 1 over 40 which is 0.25 percent so that's the quarterly interest rate now the next question the preferred share pays 2.5 percent quarterly return so it pays quarterly return 2.5 percent and the current price hundred dollars what is the amount of quarterly dividend so now we have present value hundred r 2.5 and we want to know pmt so hundred equals to the payment divided by 2.5 percent 0.025 if you compute that and your payment will be 2.5 so it pays 250 per quarter so that's the perpetuity. Perpetuity is quite, it's sort of a simple since perpetuity only um, the, the thing you have to do is to remember this formula. Okay? And the typical example of perpetuity the preferred stock. So but so the preferred stock sorry, preferred stock pays fixed amount of dividends and preferred stock never mature. So it's basically the perpetual cash flow with same amount of annuity, perpetual annuity, which is called perpetuity. So to get a preferred shares price, this price equals to your dividend divided by R, we're going to learn it in stock version 2. Okay. Now the next one is the ordinary annuity. The ordinary annuity is now annuity, so it's the same amount, $100 now, right? And at the end of the each year, so ending period, for three years, so the have maturity, this current rate is 10%. So interest rate, same. So this is annuity, and payment is end, so this is OA. So if you draw the timeline, see? One, two, three, you receive $100 for three years, right? So it's positive. Okay. And what is the present value here? So how to get it? Now it's time to use this one, cash flow registry. So let's use cash flow, I mean, not cash flow registry, I'm sorry, TBM bunch. And you remember the last class, we say, oh, PMT is always zero for this chapter and it's going to be changed in chapter five. It's time to change. Now what is this PMT? This PMT is simply the payment for annuity. Okay, so for this case, $100 will be the PMT. So again, if you draw the timeline again, the three-year annuity, 100, 100, 100, right? Three-year annuity. So, again, clear the calculator by second, CLL TBM, right? You clear it. Now n equal to 3, so 3 and you have n equal to 3. Interest rate 10%, so 10. Interest i over y. i over y equal to 10. Now PV, we're gonna use that PV. Now we're going to compute that. Now 100 is PMT. So that's payment. Now payment is 100. And we don't have any future value, any value remained, like any more cash flows at the end of the year 3. So future value equal to 0. If you compute present value then you have how much you have so let's follow that again and 3 and n get PMT your future value compute PV you should have negative two hundred forty eight dollars and sixty nine cents why do we have a negative again if you remember the like a negative sign for the detach the calculator is the direction of the cash flow to make 10% return for this 
part of cash flow. Cash inflow, you basically have to invest, right? It means that if you invest $248.69 today and you receive $100 for the next three years, then you make 10% return annually. Okay? That's the meaning of this. Uh, this meaning of these uh, cash flows. So that's how to compute the OA present value. What about the annuity due? Suppose again the same, receive $100. Now, instead of ending, you have actual beginning timing of the cash flow. Three years discount rate 10% that's the present value. Now, if you draw the timeline, it's a little bit different actually. So, you draw the timeline again. Right? Let's see. The timeline, right? We yeah. have three year cash flow. And instead of ending, you have beginning. Oh, yeah, my pen doesn't work actually, so let's uh, stop this clip here and continue. Uh, Continue to the click to like the uh, from annuity. Thank you.